Hey everybody, I'm Chris, and today we're going to take the Hubson Xeno Mini Pro uh, and do a gimbal calibration. This is a full basic IMU calibration that you use computer software to do. Uh, this will work with all the Hubson Xeno Minis. This will also work with all the Exo Blackhawk Minis. Um, so in this case, we're doing it on the Pro, and we're going to change out the gimbal and uh, that way, because this one needs a gimbal, but when we change out the gimbal, it is 100% definitely going to have either the shakes or it'll have some motor hums uh, to it. Because whenever you put in a completely new unit, a new gimbal, um, it's basically, it, it has no idea really where the exact home point is. Uh, it, you have to do the calibration through the software, which works out to be kind of like an IMU calibration kind of balances everything out and uh, then it knows when the drone is level and when it's supposed to be level. So uh, it acts, just acts buggy when you first put it in there. But this can also happen if you've had a bad accident, all of a sudden your gimbal starts to shake, you've really gone to throw that IMU off. Um, rarely, very rarely, could you have this happen with a firmware update. Uh, it would have to be probably a, a pretty big gimbal uh, firmware update uh, for it to cause any issues. Um, you could have it if you had to, if you had a bad cable. Um, the flex cables on these gimbals, which I'll show you when I take it apart, uh, they are known to go bad pretty much on all the Xenos. Um, so you'll get an error code. Uh, it's like uh, X uh zero zero eighty i can't remember and then uh x zero uh, two thousand those are usually if you have uh, bad cables or you need to do this calibration so let's just get right on to it and uh, we'll put a gimbal in i have one right here and let me just forewarn you uh, it should you have to replace your complete gimbal this is how they come they already come fully ready to go in uh, you don't have to change your dampers or anything like that. So that's really nice. But I'm seeing them for $200, $220. For me, that's too much to invest in this quad. Uh, for me, if that was the only way, only price I, I could pay, I just wouldn't do it. Um, it. For me, this type of quad is not worth dumping that much money into it. Uh, I repair drones for people. And then if you were to have to pay me to do it on top of it, it's definitely not worth it. So just a fair warning. Um, I did a Google search before doing this video and I found two of them, one for $62 and one for like $75. So do your Google searches or whatever search engine, engine you use and uh, find the cheaper prices, but you also want to use a reputable, reputable uh, seller. So um, generally places that that sell parts and accessories and drones, you can trust them. Uh, if it's just somebody on eBay selling one and it's, it looks too good to be true, it's usually too good to be true. But um, I happen to have one, so we did not have to buy one. But uh, what we'll do is we'll point the camera down and we'll show you, but it's basically, I'm just removing one, two, three, four screws, and then this just, slides right on out and you unplug two plugs. The plugs are the tricky part. That's where you want to be very careful. Uh, I get many repairs where people have attempted something and they've gone and messed up when they get to the cables. They tear the cables, they damage the pins on the plugs uh, for the motherboard or on the, the cable itself. And then they send them to me and it makes it so much harder for me to do my job fixing their quads when, when it's been boogered up like that. But accidents do happen. So let's go ahead and point it, point the camera down, and we'll take this camera out, this gimbal out, we'll put a new one in, and then we'll power it up and see how bad it shakes or if the motors vibrate, which they will since it's a new gimbal. And we'll do the computer software uh, calibration, show you how to do all that, and we'll have it all sorted out and ready to fly. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove the gimbal. It's one, two, three, four screws, like I said before. Let's go ahead and take those out. My hands will get in the way here, but you get the understanding. None of the screws are magnetic in the little mini, the Xeno minis, to keep the weight down. It's a lighter screw. 
so they're not magnetic. I can grab those. Front two I can grab, these two I can't get a hold of, so they'll come out when I pull it out. Be careful with them, they're tiny, you can lose them. So we're going to lift this up, get your fingernail under the seam there, and just lift it up. And then we want to wiggle the front out. So we're just going to get the front of it out. And then now you can see we've got this cable and that cable. Let's unplug those. You want to just be careful. Get your fingernail under this one and pop it out like so. And then this one here, the best thing you can do in this case, there's no glue on here, but if you have glue, you want to get that, you want to just pick the glue off the sides, but you got to be very careful. These cables are all like little fine hairs. So you want to grab them all and put your thumb on top of the metal part and just slightly tilt and then it'll come loose. You don't want to be pulling on it at all. If it requires any type of force, you probably still have some glue there. So let's pull that aside. Get this other one and let's pop this baby in here. So here we have another one and uh, we're going to put it in and uh, let me get the screws out of this one like I said be careful don't drop these screws <laughs> okay so we're gonna put this one in and uh, first off do the plugs so this plug right here you want to line it up you can see when you're looking at yours, there's, you can see a little center area and then there's a little hole in this plug here. That's what you want to line up just to make sure you're centered properly and then just lightly push. If you don't feel it click, you're not lined up. That side clicked. There we go. Yeah, it's being a little stubborn. Okay, I think I'm in. Now, when you undo these plugs, if you pry from the side to unplug it, you can bend this. And then when you plug, if you have to plug that same one back in, you're not going to get all your contacts. So that's why you should not ever pry from the metal portion. Always grab it by the wires right here and just do a hinge and it'll come off uh, as long as there's not glue holding it down. I've done a bunch of these and that's what I found to be the best. But then I just go across it with my fingernail, make sure that we are definitely all plugged in. And in this case, I don't use any glue because when you put this back on, it presses up against the plug. So there, I'm not putting any glue on it. But now let's line this guy up. I clicked right in place and we're set. So the cables are hooked. And then we're going to drop our gimbal down in these notched areas where the gimbal damper is. Put that in first and line up the front and then just bring down this. And that, that holds the plugs down so there is no need to glue it. Put our screws back in. So when we hook this, when we power this one on, uh, we should see a gimbal error of 0x0080. Whenever you put a new gimbal in, you will see that error code. Um, it can happen after bad crashes. Anywhere where the IMU is off, you'll get that code. And uh, there's another common code that is 0x2000. That usually means that you have to replace the black cable that we uh, unplugged, first unplugged when we undid this. And then sometimes you might have to do the IMU calibration after replacing that cable, but generally you never have to. All right, so we have the gimbal all installed. We're going to power this on and you'll see uh, it'll either twitch around or it'll be a way off position. Um, you might hear a hum or a buzzing noise but uh, that's just because it does not really recognize this. 
um, as the original gimbal and the gimbal home points are all out of whack. So basically we're going to be doing an IMU calibration for the gimbal uh, using the app. So I'll power it on and I'll be quiet so you can hear it and see it. Just keep, just keep your eye on the gimbal and listen. So you can hear a bit of a hum there. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but your point, we're pointed up. It's just stuck in that up position. So it, it does not know its home point. I'll see if you can hear the buzzing. A little bit of a buzz there. So you see it also just moved. So we're going to go into the calibration tool. I'll pull that up on the screen and it actually surprisingly does not show any error code in the upper right hand corner it actually should show 0x0080 um, but i have found this tool not to be uh, always so accurate but let's enter calibration on the upper right hand corner and it's simply just showing you move the camera or the you know the camera up and down and then you're going to move it left to right and then we're going to do roll. So you'll do that. You'll hit every axis point. Let's hit start calibrate. And you'll see it goes limp. So I'm going to go down and up. I do it twice. And then it says get calibration complete. <laughs> so this is where this calibration tool is a little faulty but I'm gonna leave it alone and then we're gonna go into start to calibrate we're gonna have to probably do this one or you know two three times so right now it says it's calibrating and you can see it moving through this paces there's no way it's correct it looks like it's off and then the three axis uh, orthogonal uh, for zero position calibration, you have to put on the gimbal cover. So we're going to put the cover on. So the cover is in place and we're going to hit start to calibrate. That happens very quickly. And then it's going to do the gyro calibration and you can leave the cover on for that or take it off so uh, we're going to leave it on and just be still and it should start there we go so now we're done with that and then what we have down at the bottom is your pid parameter settings uh, if you go into enter settings what it'll have is it'll show you all your parameters there and you can reset them. You can import parameters and this is a file that I created from a previous install. We're going to leave that alone and then you can save it and all that, but that's not nothing you're really going to be worried about. So let's turn this off. And when we power it up, I'm imagining it's still not going to be right. So let's power it back on. Where's the button? It actually went perfect. That should not have worked. <laughs> but as you can see, the gimbal is working just fine. So it, we, we only moved the gimbal up and down in that calibration. We did not move it left or right or turn it or anything like that and it's perfectly fine um, I'm going to leave it alone and let it let's test fly it and see so evidently that's all it required was that one axis movement up and down or two axis movement and it turned out to be perfectly fine but uh, like I said this tool is flawed uh, Hubson starts something and they don't finish um, I find that it gives false error codes and um, as you saw it it, it did not complete uh, the procedures the way they were supposed to, but it, it still ended up working. So 
it's one of those things that you you either get it right on the first time or you'll have to do it up to five times or maybe even more to get your your gimbal to calibrate but uh, the tool does seem to eventually work and as you can see it's holding its position so it just went into protection if you go too far it'll go into protection mode and then I'll trim it up and down here which we can't do yet until you actually start the drone but uh, yeah so that's good to go and uh, I'll just end it on that note and hopefully this is something that helped you guys uh, again look, so do your search for these gimbals uh, before you go paying two hundred dollars for something like that I think that's too high find somebody who's crashed their drone and you know the gimbal works in it or you can find deals sometimes sixty seventy dollars uh, for this gimbal you just have to look and uh, be patient and eventually you, you will find something cheaper than 200 I think but uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, thumbs up on your way out and if you're new to my channel please hit that subscribe button and as always hit the bell for future content notification and we'll catch you on the next one peace and love